up on screen here, we've got five different representations of the same scenario. You've got your physical representation or your visual representation. We've got a word problem representing the situation. We have a sequence written out that matches the pattern at the top. And we have a table with some of the values filled out. Some of the values are question marks and equation, right? We've been working with this situation for the past several weeks, taking different parts, different representations, and we've always been trying to make an equation out of them. Reason for that is the equation is the most powerful representation. After you get an equation, you can jump to different spots in a sequence or discuss different stages of the visual pattern or answer questions that go along with the word problem or the verbal description or fill in gaps that we find in the table. An equation is the fastest way to jump to different parts in a pattern, right? Because all we have to do is insert one number that we're looking for and solve to find the other number, okay? There's one more major representation style that we have looked at briefly earlier in the year, but not, not in this context, and that is graphing. We're going to go back and forth today between equations and graphs. You've done a little bit of that before. I'm going to show you how this works, but let me make this, let me make this final connection. Slope, some of you dealt with in middle school, slope is equal to a change, an up and down change, right? Which is achieved by subtracting, right? An up and down change divided by a left to right change. Again, we figure out changes by subtracting, okay? So this, this process that you've been using, subtract, Subtract, divide, a slope. Some of you are going to say, why didn't you tell us we were calculating slope? I already know how to calculate slope. It would have been easier for me because I know that process from before. But I want to, the, the, the graphing, graphing is really the only context that the idea of using the vocabulary slope makes sense in. You have a mountain slope when you are graphing. Everywhere else, we, we kind of want to call that rate of change, all right? How much is this thing changing related to this other thing changing, all right? As X travels one step, how much is my Y value changing? And this type of formula that we've been writing, the uh, sum number, slope, times a variable, plus some other number, this is, the official name for that is slope-intercept form. All right, that's what we've been working with, slope-intercept form. So you know now that this first number that multiplies the variable, that's on a graph, that's our slope. I climb up three spaces for every one space I travel to the right. All right, I, cl I climb up 15 spaces if I'm traveling five spaces to the right. Right? That's, that's our slope. And then this other number here is a intercept. It's our y-intercept. It's what does, what does, what is the value of my function when x is zero? Or where do we cross the y-axis? Right? What's the, we, way back to the beginning, what's the zeroth term? What term comes before term number one? Okay? Slope intercept form. Now, Two different things I want you to be able to do this week. I want you to be able to make quick sketches. If you have a if you have an equation in slope intercept form, I want you to be able to quickly sketch a graph. Number two, if you're given a graph, I want you to be able to write a equation in slope intercept form. Now my preference is going to be when you make these graph sketches, you do them on paper, snap a picture of it and upload it, but you can use computer tools if you wish to. Here's how I want this to work. We now know that on a graph, this first thing is slope, right? The, the, the coefficient of the variable, the thing that multiplies the variable is slope. And this second piece, got to include that negative symbol, is the y-intercept. 
So to make a quick sketch, what I want to do is draw two axes. All right, that's my y-axis, my x-axis. I want to first put my y-intercept on there. All right, we cross the y-axis at negative three. When x is zero, y is negative three. And then I want to, and then I want to count uh, my slope. So my slope is four. That means when I go forward one, I go forward one space, I go up four. So my next point would be here. And if I go forward one more, I go up four. Okay, so quick sketch. All right, doesn't look very pretty, but it's accurate. It's an accurate, quick sketch. Okay, if I wanted something to be more precise than this, if I didn't want to just get a general idea of what the equation looked like, then I would probably be using some sort of graphing technology anyway. So I don't want you to take too much time on the sketches. Okay, I do want them to be accurate but I don't want it to be a long drawn out process. If you're taking more than five minutes on a sketch, you're taking too much time with it. So let's look at this two more times if you need to see it. Uh, this guy here, especially, yeah, we got a fraction now, so slightly different situation. But again, I'm gonna start with my y-intercept is plus 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Plus 7. Okay, and now a, a negative 1 fourth slope means this top number, top number, remember the top number is always going to be, I'm going up and down. The bottom number is going to be left to right. Okay, so this says, as I go down one, I go forward four. All right, down one, forward four. So one, two, three, four. I'll be down one. All right, if I go forward four more, one, two, three, four. I'm down another one. Okay, so there's a real gentle slope downward. Quick sketch. Now, since you're making a couple of these, you're going to want to label your sketches with the proper formula. I do want separate sketches for each one. I don't want you to put all your sketches on one graph, so it's going to take a little bit of time to, to make your axes each time. This last one, the y-intercept is at plus 5. And this time, when I go up two, I go forward three. Okay. Now this is going to be bad for me because I don't I don't have a lot of room to go up. Uh, what I can do is go the other direction, down and backwards, or I could redraw my graph and and have more more space up above. Okay. But we'll say. Go down two, backwards three. That will accomplish the same thing. Down two, backwards three. Point here. Down two, backwards three. Point right there. And a quick sketch of the graph. Y equals two thirds X plus five. Now, given a graph, writing an equation in slope-intercept form is just going to be the reverse of that. I've got my graph. I know where my intercept is. It's at positive 4. So I know that I'm going to have y equals something times x plus 4. That something should be my slope. And I want to figure out, I want to find, I want to find spots. Like, this is a bad spot. I can't, I can't really tell where the where the point is. Is it halfway down? Is it a third of the way down? Is it a quarter of the way down? I want to find spots like this where it's easy for me to see both of the numbers. Alright, this is 6, 2. 
uh, spots like this. This is 12, 0. Okay? And use those to find the slope. So when I go down 2, I'm going forward 6. Down 2, forward 6. So 2 sixths negative. Y equals negative 2 sixths X plus 4. Now, if you notice, I'm not going to make you reduce your fractions, but if you notice, technically, 6 and 2 can each be divided by 2. This is a better formulation. Negative 1 third X plus 4 is my equation. If I want to write an equation, I'm going to want two things. I'm going to want a slope. So let me find two, two nice spots where I can... This looks like... Ooh, but I don't know what that I don't know what that is on the on the left. All right, here we go. Four four. That's a nice point, right there. And maybe this guy here is two negative one. So my slope, as I go up from negative one to positive four, that's up five. I'm going forward from 2 to 4. I'm going forward 2. Okay? So my slope is 5 halves. That means my equation will be y equals 5 halves x. And then my intercept down here at negative 6, so minus 6. y equals 5 half x minus 6. Double check this with 4, 4. 5 halves of 4 is 10 minus 6 is 4. True. One more time to see this if you haven't grabbed a hold of the process yet. I want two things. This one's a little different because it's not a line. It's just a set of points, but they're going in a line. Actually, it's, I think, sometimes easier when it's a set of points because it's easier to find this slope. Uh, 14, 12. 10, 9. All right, we're going down from 14 to 9. We're going down 5 at the same time that we're going forward. Negative 6, negative 4, 3. Going forward 3. Down 5 when we go forward 3. So my slope is negative 5 thirds. My equation will be y equals negative 5 thirds x plus 4. And that's all there is to it. If you have a straight line on a graph, you should be able to write an equation for that straight line. And then again, we'll get into this more next week, you can use that equation to find out other stuff like what will y equal when x is 99? That's called extrapolation, but like I said, we get into it next week.